for the second weekend in a row, this weekend's final order cutoff is gigantic. But it's not filled with the meaty, fatty, good stuff that we can sink our teeth into, but there are a lot of little possibilities out there that we need to cover. So let's go ahead and dive in to today's video. What is going on, comic book fans? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Final Order Cutoff Speculation and Recommendations video. This is the video where I look at this weekend's Final Order Cutoff and I take a look at every single book that's on there and I try to figure out if there's any books worthy for you and me to speculate on so that way we can try to make this hobby fund itself. But guys, I also look at all the books on this weekend's Final Order Cutoff looking for any new number ones that I think are going to be absolutely amazing reads so that way we don't miss out on those amazing stories. Stories. So speculation and recommendations is what this video is all about. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and cover my three weekly speculation reminders. If you guys are seasoned speculators or you guys have seen this video series before, you guys can look down in the description below and skip right ahead to Final Order Cutoff Cover Liver Picks. But if you guys are new to speculation or new to this video series, hear out these three weekly speculation reminders. And the first one up is the most important, and that is you guys have to do your own research. I'm gonna present some information to you guys today, but what I need you to do is to go check other comic book YouTubers you trust, other comic book websites that you trust, and other comic book apps that you trust. Gather the most information possible so that way you guys can make the best decisions possible for yourself. Because remember guys, you guys are spending your own hard earned money on these books. It's not my money, it's your money. Now the second reminder that I have for you guys is that there are delays with comic books. So sometimes the book's release date will get moved for one reason or another so that book could show up on final order cutoff multiple times. Now the third and final reminder that I have for you guys is that I record this video on Thursday. Today is Thursday, March 16th of 2024 and DC Comics, Marvel Comics and all the independent publishers have until Friday at 5 p.m. which is tomorrow to lock in what books are on this weekend's final order cutoff. So that means they could add or remove books after I record this video. So I highly suggest you guys check out these two places before you finalize your orders for this weekend's final order cutoff. And the first place up is the Comic Book Frontier. It is an absolute fantastic Facebook group run by my good friend Al and he will update his final order cutoff speculation picks all the way up until the final order cutoff order deadline dates, which we will cover in just a few moments. Now, the other place is coverprice.com. It is an absolutely fantastic comic book website, especially if you guys want comic book data about older books, new books, all, all the books that are selling on the secondary market. There is so much information on that website and they post their final order cutoff list, I believe on Sundays. So guys, make sure you guys are checking out coverprice.com and the comic book frontier before you finalize your orders for this weekend's final order cutoff. All right, guys, with my three speculation reminders out of the way, let's go ahead and cover this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates. All right, guys, if you're interested in picking up any of the books that I'm going to talk about in today's video, you guys need to get your pre-orders in by May 19th for your DC Scout and Vault books and May 20th for your Marvel and all the other independent publishers. And the main reason why you want to get your orders in by these dates is because you can save up to 20% off the cover price of these books. There are multiple online retailers that do give that discount. I would just do a little bit of Googling. You guys can even join the Discord group down in the description below. And I Ask where other people order their final order cutoff books from. I will also have a couple links down in the description below from places that I've ordered from in the past. But guys, 20% of a book that you're gonna speculate on is pretty good because that means your profit margins are gonna be that much higher. All right, guys, that is this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates. It is time to finally dive into our final order cutoff cover lever fix. All right, guys, we got a bunch of good covers, and then we also have a bunch of Scotty Young big Marvel covers to cover at the end. So let's go ahead and dive into these covers. And the first one up is Catwoman issue number 66, the cover C variant done by Pablo's Villabos. I have been loving these Villabos covers for Catwoman. They're absolutely fantastic. Villabos is really hitting a stride with these covers. They are just, they are gorgeous in my opinion, and I can see this doing well in the future. You guys, next up is Catwoman issue number 66. This is the cover D, which is 
is the 1 in 50 ratio variant done by W. Scott Forbes. Just another gorgeous cover. And again, I'm not sure if this is going to do well right out of the gate, but I can see possibly in the future this one doing well. Now, guys, the next one I really like. This is Wonder Woman issue number 10, the cover E variant, which is the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Jeff Spokes. I love that this is a 1 in 25. Jeff Spokes is an absolute stud. And then you have Wonder Woman and all the Wonder Ladies on there. It is absolutely fantastic. Now, guys, next up is Wonder Woman issue number 10, the cover C variant done by Dan Panosian. Now, the Discord group showed me this one. I don't absolutely love it, but the more I look at it, the more I do like it. It's something about the rope that I'm not personally liking, but a bunch of people in the Discord really liked it, so I figured, you know what, why not show the love to this cover to you guys, and you guys can make your own decisions. Now, guys, next up is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 52 with the variant cover in the 1 in 100 virgin ratio variant done by Pop. Pablo's Villabos, you got Black Cat stealing some stuff, Villabos, or Villa Lobos, absolutely amazing. This is a great cover in my opinion, and I really like the 1 in 100 Virgin. I don't know, I think the trade dress does take a little bit away, but you guys let me know down in the description below, which one do you like more, the Virgin or the trade dress? Probably the trade dress because it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Now guys, next up is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 52 with the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Addy Gronov. It's just a cool Spider-Man cover. Now guys, next up is another cool cover. This is the Sensational She-Hulk issue number nine, the variant cover done by Adam Hughes. So you know Hughes collectors are gonna like it. This is a really cool looking She-Hulk cover. She looks beautiful. She's got a little cleavage going. Her expression on her face is amazing. And you notice that she's breaking the uh, the judge's desk and she's like a little freaked out about it. It is so good. I should say freaked out, but like startled. So good. Now guys, next up is Gun Honey Collision Course issue number two with the FOC variant, which is the black and white ink virgin variant done by Kendrick Lim. Now this is obviously the sketch version for the main cover, but this is a really cool version of it. I think I like this more than the cover A. But guys, next up is a gorgeous cover. This is Thundercats issue number five with the cover E variant and also the one in 40 virgin ratio variant done by Ivan Tao. Ivan Tao is hit or miss for me. I don't love all the covers, but man, this one featuring Chitara is really, really good. Now guys, guess what? There's more. Next up is Blood Hunt Red Band Edition, issue number four with the one in 25 ratio variant done by Betsy Cola. Now I personally do not like these, but if you look at these Red Band versions of Blood Hunt, uh, the one in 25s, they are going for like an astronomical amount of money. Issue number one, I believe it's up to over $300, the one in 25. The issue number two is selling for over 250 already, and it's only a one in 25. And now this is obviously gonna be um, issue number four. I'm not sure if that trend is gonna start coming down and it's not gonna sell as well, but even if it sold for $50, $50 is double ratio price. That'd be an awesome, especially if you can get it in um, for ratio. So guys, keep an eye on this book. This is probably gonna be the best bet for a quick flip. Now, Next up is the final book before we get into the Scotty Young big Marvel covers, but this is Ain't No Grave issue number two with the one in 25 ratio variant done by Scotty Young. Now, issue number one did not really have any variants. There was a store exclusive uh, from the Scotty Young store and that was it. There was the cover A and that, but this having a one in 25 done by Scotty Young and it is such a good one. It is so freaking cool. You get the main character with the pointing at a gun at death and what does it say? That's gonna be a hard pass. That is just, that is really good. I love that it's a one in 25 too, so it's gonna be a little bit more rare. I might actually try to score myself one of these, um, not for speculation, but for my collection, because I love Scotty Young, but I can see this being a good buy-in as well for speculation. All right, guys, let's go ahead and cover the Scotty Young big Marvel covers. Obviously, just like every other week, I think this is the third week in a row we have these, third week. Um, we have the regular cover plus the one in 50 black and white version. So I'm just gonna say the name of each one and not say, you know, color, black and white, just, just so you guys know moving forward. All right, guys, the first one up is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 52. Obviously, this one features Spider-Punk, and it's okay. I don't like the way that his head looks kind of like a football. Other than that, it's badass. After that is Captain America issue number 10. Cap looks like he's cross-eyed. What the heck is going on there? Don't love this one. After that is Captain Marvel issue number nine. This one's okay, but again, her eyes almost look a little cross-eyed to me. And there's three more. Next up is Doctor Strange issue number 16. I don't love this one because he looks like he's half asleep. 
What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? Not like it? Let me know down in the comments below. After that, it's probably my favorite. This is the Immortal Thor issue number 12. I wish the book itself was actually really good, but this cover, like, Thor just looks like he's having so much fun. That is an absolutely banger cover, in my opinion. And the last one up is the Invincible Iron Man issue number 19. All right, guys, those are all the Scotty Young big Marvel covers. Don't forget, black and white is the one in 50, and the colored one is just the regular cover price for the book. All right, guys, those are all my cover lover picks for this week. Let's go ahead and jump into the plethora. There are so many second prints, facsimiles, and beyond. All right, guys, I am not lying. There are so many facsimiles, second prints, and beyond. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this off with all the facsimiles and then go into the second prints and beyond. So first up, we got Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the archive edition, issue number three. And this is the cover A, it's done by Tom Palmer. It's the original cover. But then we obviously are gonna have a cover B, and this is the cover B, which is done by Dan Panosian. And I'm not gonna lie. I really like this cover B, which is a brand new cover for this archive edition, which is your facsimile edition. This cover is absolutely fantastic. We get the main character of the girl, and I forgot what that big monster's name is. I haven't watched this movie in like 30 years, I would want to say. But guys, this is a fantastic cover, especially for any Labyrinth fans. This is fantastic. Now guys, after that, we have Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue number C, with the facsimile edition, which has the regular, the foil, in the blank edition. I'm just happy we don't have a 1 in 25 ratio variant for that. But guys, hold on. The next two books are both Marvel books, and there is the facsimile and the 1 in 25 ratio variant, which has a new cover for it, because, you know, we need those. So first up is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 257, the facsimile edition. This has the first appearance of Ned Leeds as the third Hobgoblin, brainwashed by Roddick Kingsley, and also the second appearance of Puma. So this is the facsimile edition, but there's also the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Tony S. Daniel. Very similar look to them, just like kind of like updated art on the second one. Do we need it? No, we don't. But let's go ahead and move on. After that is Marvel Superhero Secret Wars issue number 7 with the facsimile edition in the foil. And this has the first full appearance of Spider-Woman, Julia Carpenter, and also the first battle between She-Hulk and Titana. But guys... Don't worry, because there's also, this. I gotta admit, this is actually a really nice cover. A 1 in 25 ratio variant for this facsimile, done by a name I cannot pronounce. I know, I believe the last name is Yoon, but I have no idea how to pronounce their first name, so I'm not even gonna give it a shot. But guys, this cover, I wanna say, is actually pretty freaking good. I really like it. But guys, those are all the facsimiles. Let's go ahead and dive into the second prints and beyond. And there's also a bunch of them. And first up is the Avengers issue number 14 with the blood soaked second print variant done by Joshua Kassara. And after that is Blood Hunters issue number one with the blood soaked second print variant done by Greg Land. And after that is Doctor Strange issue number 15 with the blood splatter, not blood soaked, blood splatter second print variant done by Alex Ross. And after that, we have Dracula Blood Hunt, issue number one with the Blood Soaked variant done by um, Rod Reese, the second print, obviously. And after that is Strange Academy Blood Hunt, issue number one with the Blood Soaked second print variant done by Umberto Ramos. And after that, we have Vengeance of the Moon Knight, issue number five with the Blood Soaked second print variant done by David Proporte. Those are all the Blood Soaked or Blood Splattered or Blood Blood. Those are all those. So let's go ahead and move over to the regular covers. And then they are Ultimate Spider-Man issue number three, the third print variant done by Marco Cicchetto. How many prints of this are we gonna go? On the first one, we're up to six. Are we gonna go to six on this as well? I truly hope not. But guys, after that, Spider-Woman issue number seven, the second print variant done by Paco Medina. The artwork technically has not been released for this yet, but if it is released while I'm editing this video, I'll make sure I will add it. But there was a ton of buzz. This book was selling well on the secondary market for the first print, so keep an eye out on this because maybe this will do something similar. Obviously not as much, but you know, maybe it will. But after that is a really nice cover this is Spider Woman issue number seven, the second print, one in 25 virgin ratio variant done by Peach Momoko. Obviously, it's a second print, one in 25, so it will be a little bit more rare. And I personally really like the artwork on this cover. And after that, we have another book that does not have the artwork for it yet. It is Ain't No Grave issue number one with the second print variant done by Jorge Corona. Now, the final one, the final book that has a second print, there's been 10, 10 of them, which is a lot. It's Gun Honey Collision Course issue number one with the second print variant done by Derek Chu. I gotta be honest, I picked up uh, 
the Adam Hughes 1 in 20 yesterday. So good. Such a great cover. But I really like this second print. I think it's the yellow with the um, pinks and blues and everything else that are really making this one pop. I don't know. The colors from the girl kind of like take away from it because they do, they do, Derek 2 does them like really shiny and I don't like that. But this one right here is really freaking cool. All right, guys. Those are all the second prints, facsimiles, and beyond. Let's go ahead and find out what books have a little something in the guts of the book for speculation. All right, before we dive into these books, a quick reminder to make sure you guys are checking coverprice.com and the comic book frontier because they both found books that I did not find last week that had something in the guts. So just a reminder, check those places because they, you know, maybe they're better speculators than me or maybe they're just a little bit more thorough or they just had a little bit more time to dig through the books on final order cutoff and they were able to find those little tidbits, you know, to find the things that were in the guts. But just a reminder, I'm human. I miss things and check those two places before you finalize your order. All right, guys, first up. So the first two books, two books I am reading into the solicitation and like, you know, making some educated guesses. There's no hard proof that there's like real first appearances in these books, but I'm reading the tea leaves and you guys let me know down in the comments below if you agree with me or not. So first up, we got Batman Gotham Gaslight Kryptonian Age issue number one. Now the solicitations mentions the emergence of superhuman beings beyond all comprehension. This sequel series expands the 19th century DC universe beyond the confines of Gotham City, showcasing bold new versions of once familiar heroes. Do not miss it. So what I am taking from here is that we're gonna get the first appearances of heroes that we know and love, but in this new Kryptonian age, or I should say 19th century universe. So you know, are those true first appearances? Maybe. I mean, the first time we saw the Bat Vampire Batman, that was the first appearance of Vap Vampire Batman. We don't know what these new characters are going to look like. I shouldn't say new characters. Our older characters in this 19th century age. Maybe they're going to be really cool. Maybe people are going to latch on to them and that will make the speculation. It's all about how cool the character is and how much people want to see more of that character because people will sound off and let people know that these characters are really cool and we want more of them. But guys, also the cover B for this book is really freaking good. No, the cover C, cover C, B. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't have it written down, but it's done by Francisco Matina and it is really, really good. All right, guys, after that is the second book that I'm reading the tea leaves on. It is Batman Superman World's Finest issue number 28. Now the solicitation here mentions a multitude of DC guest stars in their fifth dimensional counterparts. My guess is that we're going to have the first appearances of a bunch of different fifth dimensional imps like Mixoplex, like Batmite, like Nightmite. When those three first appeared, those were all first appearances. So why can't we have the first appearance of, you know, Green Lantern Might in, uh, I don't know, Cyborg Might and any other fifth dimensional might that might be there? Because again, maybe people might latch onto that little might and they want to see more of them and that will make this their first appearance. Now, is that good speculation? I don't know, guys. I truly don't know if any of these things are actually going to blow up and do well in the secondary market. I didn't think Spider-Woman issue number seven was going to do well. That's why I didn't put it on the list or I forgot to put it on the list. But it did great. It was selling for like 20 bucks in the secondary market, which is bananas for a bunch of like sidekick characters that were introduced in that thing or a team of like young heroes. I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't important to me, but I guess people liked it and bought it. So you never know. So I'm reading the tea leaves on those two books. You guys do what you want with that. All right, guys. Next up, I'm also reading a little bit of the tea leaves, but it says origin in the description. But guys, this is Spider-Woman issue number eight with the origin story of a new champion character will be revealed. So one of the characters that is in that new team group is going to have their origin story in this book. So if you're really liking that team from the last issue, this issue you might want because if you don't have their first appearance or second appearance, you want their origin story. And this will technically have their second appearance in the origin story in this book. But I don't know what character it's going to be for because I haven't read a preview or I don't have any inside knowledge. But reading the synopsis is where I got that. All right, guys, after that is Venomverse Reborn issue number one. Now we're most likely going to get the first appearance of alternate reality Venom characters in this book. 
There's nothing um, specific in the synopsis, but come on, this is a Venomverse book. Just like the Spider-Verse books, there's always a first appearance in these books. So I would just think, you know, if you're into collecting that type of thing, this is a book you definitely want to pick up. All right, guys, the final book is Misery, issue number one. Now, this is just a four-issue limited series based on Misery, the daughter of Spawn's ex-wife. This is a four-issue miniseries, and I'm putting it on the list because it's a new number one, and it's part of the Spawn universe. And there are Spawn collectors out there. I'm not sure how many copies of this book are going to sell. Probably not a ton because I don't know how popular Misery is as a character. So maybe in the future when other people are getting into Spawn and they want to collect everything Spawn, this will be a book that they want to collect. Editor Bruce here, guys. There is a book that I missed while I was shooting this video earlier today, and that is The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 52 with the first appearance of a new goblin. And from everything that I've heard online, it's actually going to be Peter Parker as this new goblin. Now, I have no proof of this. I have not read any of The Amazing Spider-Man of the current run, or that's a lie. I've read some of the beginning of the run, but nothing currently. So make sure you guys are doing your own research, but supposedly there is going to be a new goblin in issue number 52. All right, guys, those are all the books that possibly might have a little bit of something in the guts. Let's go ahead and move on to my spec picks of the week. All right, guys, we covered a ton of books. There was a bunch of cover liver picks. There were a ton of facts in Lee's Second Prince and Beyond. And there were a few books that had a little something in the guts. But there is one book, one book that most likely is going to sell well on the secondary market. And that is Blood Hunt Red Band Edition, issue number four, with the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Betsy Cola. And I honestly don't know why this book would sell, because it, it is a big crossover event. And I personally do not like this cover. But... For some reason, these 1 in 25s for the Red Band Edition are selling like crazy. Now, they are homages to older books, and maybe that's why people are collecting these like this. But $200 for the first one on issue number one is nuts! Nuts! These are 1 in 25s! But there's not a ton of them out there because... To get a 1 in 25 of this, you need to order 25 copies of the Red Bin Edition. You can't just order 25 copies of the regular issue and get this. No, a shop has to order 25 of just the Red Band. So I think these covers are a lot more rare because I don't think a lot of shops are ordering 25 of the Red Band because that's a lot. A lot for a regular uh, brick and mortar to sell. But really? Really? I don't know. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling, my gut says this book is gonna sell well on the secondary market. So that's why I'm suggesting you guys try to hunt this down. And even if you sell it for $50, you're probably gonna make a profit on this book unless you have to spend $50 to get it. But most likely this is the surest bet out of every single book that we spoke about on this week's final order cutoff. So that is my spec pick of the week. Let's go ahead and cover the one book that I found on this weekend's final order cutoff that I think you guys have to pick up because I think the story is gonna be so freaking good. All right, guys, there were a good amount of new number ones on this weekend's final order cutoff, but you know, none of them really like sang to me. They weren't like, Bruce, you have to read me. I'm gonna be so good, except for one. Except for one, they were, it was like singing that sweet, sweet lullaby to me. And I was like, oh man, I want to pick you up and it's going to be so good. And guys, that is Destro issue number one. Now this is coming from the writer of Dan Waiters and has art by Andrea Bresson. Bresson, I want to say, I'm totally sorry if I'm butchering your name, but guys, we got a villain book from G.I. Joe written by Dan Waiters, who is an absolute badass writer. And then we have the artist of Andrea Branson, or Andre Branson, um, who did the artwork for Dark Ride. So if you read Dark Ride, you know this guy can draw. And so I am just pumped. The Energon universe has been so good, so good. Even if the book is not great, it's still really fun because it's nostalgic. We're, we're reliving the past, guys. Transformers, G.I. Joe was such a big, Part. They were a big part of my childhood and just reliving them in a way that the stories are just good. They don't have to be like amazing, but some of them are. They're so good. Transformers is like Daniel Warren Johnson, man. So good. But G.I. Joe has been good. Duke has been good. Now Destro or oh, Cobra Commander has also been a ton of fun. Really like just well, well done. Well told stories. So let's go ahead and read the synopsis for Destro because this is going to continue that wave of just amazing storytelling within the Energon universe. Thank you, Robert Kirkman, for making this happen. This is so good. James McCullen, Destro 24, is the man behind Mars industry, the undisputed leader in providing high-tech weapons to world powers for the right price. 
The emergence of Energon has changed everything. As Destro's ambitions grow, the Crimson Twins, Tomax and Zamot Paoli emerge to destroy their competition. The Cobra Commander realizes his current ally could be his future greatest enemy. I definitely totally butchered the Crimson Twins' names, but you know what? Why are you giving your characters impossible names to pronounce? I can't do it. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. But guys, this book sounds freaking awesome. You got Destro possibly going up against the Cobra Commander. Hell freaking yes. This could be really, really freaking good. All right, guys, let's go ahead and cover these variants. I'll make sure I label them up on screen so that way you guys know which one they are. But guys, there is a black and white sketch variant, which is a con connecting cover set, which is okay. And then there is a cover C, I want to say it is, done by um, Nicola Sejesma. I'm totally butchering that person's name, but his artwork is so freaking good, and I love this cover. And then there is a 1 in 50 ratio variant done um, by Jorge Fornes that has been released so far. But there's also a bunch of covers that we don't have the artwork for just yet. Yet, but these are the covers that have been released and I really like the Nicolas and Jesma. That is definitely my favorite. All right, guys, that is the new number one that I think you guys have to be excited about. All right, guys, there is one more section to cover before we sign off on today's video, and that is my new comic book day cover lover picks for next week, which is May 22nd of 2024. I told you guys this was going to be a big video. There are 10 10 covers that I think could possibly do well on the secondary market that are coming out next week. So let's go ahead and cover these. And the first one up is Something is Killing the Children, issue number 37, with the 1 in 50 virgin ratio variant done by Dustin Gwynn. Now, I think this book is going to be popular, and I think this book is going to sell well on the secondary market because it's done by Dustin Gwynn. It's an absolute badass piece of artwork, and it's a 1 in 50. How many shops at this point at issue number 37 are going to be ordering 50 copies of this book. So I think it's gonna be rare and I think people are gonna want it because this is absolute badass because I really want it. I really want to get this and I want to get it signed by Dustin Gwynn because this is freaking fantastic. But guys, after that is Wonder Woman issue number nine with the cover B variant done by Julian Tedesco. It's Tedesco, man. This one is so good. So good. I love it. I I love so many of his covers for Wonder Woman. This one right here, though, it hits freaking hard. I wish this was a 1 in 25. It would make it a little bit more rare, a little bit more spicy. But being open order is fine, too, because people can get their hands on this cover. It just won't be as rare. All right, guys, after that, it's the Immortal Thor, issue number 11, with the variant cover, done by Arthur Adams. I'm putting it up here because it's Arthur Adams. You guys do what you want with it. I personally don't love it, but I think Arthur Adams completionists are probably going to want to pick this up, and maybe there won't be that many of them out there. I don't know. It's Arthur Adams. All right, guys, after that is the fall of the House of X, issue number five, with the 1 in 25 ratio variant, done by Nick Bradshaw. I really like this cover. It stands out to me. You got Storm. She looks fantastic. She looks absolute badass. And I think that's probably going to make this book possibly do well. Maybe. There's definitely nothing in the guts for this book. But this cover art is really freaking good. And after that is Catwoman issue number 65. The cover B variant. Done by Pablo's Villalobos. This is just, it's great. It's freaking great. All right, guys, after that, this book is already selling. Already selling. If you guys are not part of the Discord, you make sure you guys are joining that. Someone put in the Discord, this book right here. This is Blood Hunt Red Band Edition, issue number two, the 1 in 25 ratio variant done by Logan Lubera. It's already selling over $200. Already. It's not even out. It's bananas. It comes out next week, but it's already selling for that much. It's crazy. All right, guys, after that is Spider-Gwen, the Ghost Spider, issue number one, with the variant cover in the 1 in 100 virgin ratio variant, done by Jenny Frizen. I love-hate this. I love that it's Jenny Frizen. You can see some elements of her in there, but I don't love it. I wish I did. I really do, but I don't. But this is a great cover. It, I, it is good. It is good, and I think it probably will sell because it's Spider-Gwen, it's Frizen. There's, like, a little bit of magic right there, but... Probably go for the higher ratio book, not the uh, open order. All right, guys, after that is Spider-Gwen, the Ghost Spider, issue number one, with the variant cover in the 1 in 50 version ratio variant done by Pablo's Villalobos. Again, I don't love it. I don't hate it, but I want it. <laughs> It's like, it's like, it's that thing. You see the name of an artist you really like and you just want to collect it. It's also Spider-Gwen, such a great character. I just wish I loved it and I don't. So, I don't know. 
That's me personally, but I show you these things so that way you guys have the information and you guys can do your own research. This next cover is absolutely badass. This is Feral issue number three with the cover D, which is the one in 25 ratio variant done by Jenny Frizen. I think this one is gonna do well. I really do. I think this being a Frizen cover and it just, it is really good and it definitely sells, I believe what's happening in the story of the book really well. And it is just a great freaking cover. Um, and how many stories are gonna be ordering 25 copies of this? Think about it. Think about it. All right, guys, in the final cover that I want to show you guys is Man's Best, issue number three with the cover E variant, which is the Virgin variant done by Jesse Lonergan. Now, this matches up, I believe, with the cover A for this. The cover A has the cat and the cover um, E has the dog. Um, the cover A just has the trade dress. I kind of like the Virgin um, a lot myself. But guys, those are all my cover letter picks for next week's new column book day that I think could possibly do well on the secondary market. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, guys, we are at the end of today's video, and all I have to say to every single one of you who are still watching this video right now is thank you. You guys are the true legends of this comic book community, and you guys support this channel so much, so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and if you guys like that video, and you guys enjoy comic book content, I don't know why I do this every single time, but, uh, and you guys are not subscribed, what are you doing? Get yourself subscribed, hit that bell for notifications, and smash that like button. All right, guys, have yourself a great weekend, and a great final order cut off. Good luck getting any of the books that you guys want to get for speculation, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.